Hello again. Today we'll be continuing with the topic of the continuous system and and today continuous systems and today we will be speaking about the beam vibration. It means that this time we have to take into account flexural rigidity of our element. We will be considering uh, such an thing, I mean such an prismatic road, but like I mentioned there will be feature connected with the elasticity given by the young modulus connected with the area and that thing which is important if you are talking about the bending there will be moment of inertia of the cross section of our beam and also of course we have to take into account density of the system and for our system we will assume that the length between this, between the joints is exactly L, but if we are talking about the governing equation, it doesn't bigger matter if we are talking about the final results. Okay, and we, like always, introduce some function W, which denotes a displacement of our beam, because, like I told you at the beginning, we are dealing with the flexural vibration, I mean the transversal direction, we will introduce function W which denotes, which indicates uh, the transversal the, uh, the displacements. It means the deflection beam, I mean the deformated beam, will look like that, like that blue shape, and function W will be given like that. Here we have the special coordinate and it's a function w of x and t which denotes the displacement of the free line of the beam I mean and the formant line and it will be w of x and t such a thing okay and like last time like always we will be considering only the short infinitesimal slice of our element given by dx will be given by the thickness dx and our situation is as follows i mean we have the slice or the segment of our beam it's zoomed and like i told you the length of that is a short distance infinitesimal distance uh, delta x here we have the position x and that thing is described that position is described by w, x and t and here we have displacement w, x plus delta x and t, such a thing. And like always using the uh, Newton second law, we have the mass of the segment times density, it will be, oh sorry, there will be mass of the segment tam, times acceleration, like in the case of the string, it will be expressed by such a formula, and from the other hand, as the right hand side, we have the continuous load density times the distance x, and the continuous load density, it will be the force, which will be uniformly distributed on that symbol segment in it will be the q here we have such an equation we know it's easy to compute that the mass of that particular segment it will be density times area times dx that is why we are getting such a form of the governing equation it will be second time derivative of w equals uniform load or continuous load times length of the segment and now we are able to simplify everything by delta x and we are getting a density i mean rho times uh, a times second derivative of w equals q and now we have the problem how to find the value of the density of that uniformly distributed law. And generally, because we are dealing with the simple Euler Bernoulli uh, beam, I mean with the beam which is described by such an equation, I mean the E times I times 
second spatial derivative of W, we know that fact from the strength of the material, and that formula says that such an expression, I mean the curvature of the deflection line of the beam times flexural rigidity, it will be the bending moment. From the other hand, also from the strength of the material, we know that, uh, that the bending moment and the shear force, which is typically denoted by V, is given by the following relationship. I mean, the first spatial derivative of the bending moment, it will be the shear force. And also we know that if we take the first derivative of the shear force, we are getting distributed load of the beam. And for that, we need some extra scheme. For typical assumptions, where the positive moment is given in that way, it will be positive bending moment, we have that the positive, I mean it's a bending moment here and here, here we have the positive value of the shear force, and such a QB, I mean the bending uniform distributed law, will be facing downward. It's important thing. It's exactly opposite to our case for our governing equation. I mean, here we have the QB. And what can we state based on that, uh, that thing? Look, if we will put V in the form of the first derivative of the bending moment, we are getting that the second derivative of the bending moment, spatial derivative, it's a negative value of the uniformly distributed law. From the other hand, we see that that formula, it's also formula for the, uh, for the bending moment. I mean, if we take the second derivative of that formula, we are getting that second derivative of the bending moment will be minus EI times fourth derivative of W. And now we can put that thing to that thing. And as a result, we are getting that EI times fourth derivative of W, spatial derivative of W, is exactly equal the uniformly distributed load, but load which is facing downward. It means that if we want to apply that formula for our governing equation, we have to change the sign. Okay, I will rewrite that thing. I mean, I will rewrite that thing, and here we have that rho times A times D uh, square W over DT square equals Q. And in our case, because Q is facing upward and QB is facing downward, it will be minus QB. But from the other hand, from the left hand side of that equation, we see that it will be exactly minus E i times fourth derivative of w with respect to x. And at the end of that process, we are getting that rho times a times acceleration of a displacement function plus e i times second derivative of the curvature is equal to zero and by simple rearrangement we are getting that acceleration of the process sorry times plus e a over rho uh, e i over rho a times fourth derivative of W with respect to X is exactly equal zero. And typically we are introducing some special number to denote that thing. Because it's a the order of that derivative is a, it's a four. That is why we are introducing some constant K to the power of four. And as a final result, we are able to write down that the acceleration of the beam it will be k to the fourth times fourth derivative 
of W with respect that to x4. And it is the final form of the governing equation for the transversal beam vibration. As you see, it isn't especially complicated and as you see, it's quite similar to our wave equation which describes the vibration of the string or the vibration of the rod. As you see, it's not especially complicated. Thank you for your attention. See you next time.